Actually, I was not uh, expecting so many of you to turn up at all. My weather is... No, it's not because of the weather. No, I thought... <laughs> one part of the mind will say, there is a talk on procrastination, why don't you go and attend it? Maybe you need it. Right? And then another part of the brain will say, let's do it later. <laughs> So I thought many of you may not turn up, I'm surprised to see so many of you even turn up. Right? The very fact that you have turned up for a talk on procrastination indicates what? That you want to work on it? Yes. So this is the first step. So I think first you need one round of applause for you. Yeah. Let me work on this part of the uh, procrastination. Right? So what we will do in the next one hour is uh, the concept of procrastination, what is procrastination, what are the myths surrounding procrastination, right? And uh, at a very fundamental level, why do we actually procrastinate, right? Do we need to work on all the procrastinations that we do? Do we need to uh, see to it that we never ever postpone anything at all? Or sometimes this postponing also a good thing to do, right? And we'll also take a look at the practical ways of how perhaps we can work on some aspects of procrastination. And uh, in the end, I would also like to hear from you people. I would like your contribution to how you have worked on a particular uh, procrastination trait that you are going on postponing something. How did you manage to overcome that? I would like to hear that from you also in the end. Then we wouldn't be in this class, <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's, not, it's not like, like, let me put it like this. If I am here, Talking on procrastination, it does not mean I am not procrastinating. Right? Fundamentally, all of us are guilty as charged. Right? All of us are guilty of having postponed something or the other at some point in our life. Nobody can say I have never postponed anything in my life, I always do it at that. If such a person is there, you will not be here, including me. Right? So if I ask, if I ask you to raise your hands and who are all the people who have procrastinated, all of you will raise your hands and also add my hand to that. Right? So it's not about that. It's like we all procrastinate, right? Let's firstly understand that. It's a human nature to postpone things. Right? It's a human nature to say, let me do it uh, later. No, I, I saw this wonderful uh, t-shirt somebody was wearing, that Nike t-shirt. Yeah. With that uh, tick mark and saying, uh, just do it. Yeah. Right? It just said, just do it. Until a little later, I saw another person wearing the same kind of t-shirt. It just said, just do it and later. <laughs> That's, that's how we are, isn't it? Like we, we tend to, as a human nature, it's, it's, it's like, it's given human nature that we do not postpone things. Right? Why we postpone things, we'll talk about a little later. But firstly, we need to understand that all of us do postpone things, all of us do procrastinate on different aspects of it. Right? But even before going into the area of procrastination, we need to understand what does it mean? When we say procrastination, what exactly does procrastination mean? What is your idea? What do you think procrastination means? Other than the equivalent of postponing, that's an equivalent of procrastination. But where do we actually need to work on? Laziness to do work on time. Laziness? Time management. Time management? Ability to willpower. Willpower. Ability to decide. Ability to decide. I'm glad that all the three things came up. Time management, laziness, willpower. Because these are the three things I want to talk about as a myths of uh, procrastination, not really the causes of procrastination. Right? These are the three big myths. But when you look at procrastination, I want you to understand that every time you postpone doing something, that's not called as procrastination. Right? Suppose I decide that I have to do five things today, and I decide two things I'll do it tomorrow. Is that procrastination or is it prioritizing? Prioritizing. Then why can't we say everything that we do is prioritizing? <laughs> if we get away by giving the excuse, then this, I'm just prioritizing. I have to go for, I have to start my exercise, but there is something more important to do today. Let me prioritize it. Isn't it? So, when we look at the things, yes, when we prioritize, we postpone things. So, those are not really procrastination. We don't really call them as procrastination. If you can look at procrastination into two broad categories, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. You now, we postpone some activity to later. This I do in the afternoon or this I do tomorrow. That we cannot call it as a procrastination. It's called a bad habit as such. We will define procrastination as things that you need to do for your long-term good which you are not doing. That is procrastination. Right? Things that you need to do for your long term good, for your own long term benefits, which is there in the long term. And what I do today, I am not going to get the results today. But I am going to get the results 
few months down the line, few years down the line, maybe uh, number of years down the line only the results can be seen. But I have to do that work today, right? And I keep postponing doing that. That is what we call procrastination because it affects your long-term goal in your life, right? Can you give me some examples of what would be the long-term goals that we keep postponing about? Health? Health, we keep postponing issues of health, right? Either it is to start your exercises or to get your medical checkup done. How many people just keep postponing the medical checkup to be done? I, need, I know I have to go for a medical checkup, but I keep postponing it. I know I have to go for once in a year, at least I have to go for my dental checkup, but I keep postponing it. Right? This is good for your long term benefit. Right? All health is issues of long term. I can't say anything today. If I don't do it today and do it tomorrow, it is not, it does not going to make a difference. But if I don't do it today and I don't do it next year also, it's going to make a difference. Right? What about savings? Saving money? Right? Is that is that a thing that we all sometimes suffer from? That I say, okay, I'll start saving from next month onwards. And I'll start saving from next year onwards. Something we keep postponing things. But is saving good for long term? Yes, yes. Is saving money for good yourself? Are you ensuring your own long term financial security when you save? Right? Or let, let us say what about getting into uh, learning a new thing that you have been wanting to do? Getting into a, uh, changing your uh, let's say changing your career. If you want to change your career, if, if that's good for you, it's the long term, you're postponing it, is that bad? Right? These are the things we call it as procrastination. Right? Procrastination should be defined as things that we keep postponing which are good for us in the long run. Right? I can't see it in the short term, there's nothing in the short term. The things that I postpone in the short term, like, you know, I, I go to do, so I've got to call my mom today, instead of today, I'll call her tomorrow. That is not procrastination. But so let us say a, a person comes to you, let's say he's 25 or 28 years old, she is, and there's a lot of pressure on her to get married. And she keeps postponing it. Is that good or bad? Depends on who she marries. Is that good or bad? If she is looking to kind of get married and raise a family, if that is her objective, is there a life, is there a date when maybe she should have done these things? Biologically, is there a date when you should have raised your family? Now, if that is the intention, then if she is going on postponing it, is that procrastination? Yes, it is procrastination because it's not good for her in the long run. Right? Or let us say somebody is in a relationship. And there's always this thing of is this relationship to commit to this relationship or not commit to this relationship. One person wants a commitment, another person does not want a commitment, is going on postponing it. He is going on saying that no, we'll take a look at it six months down the line, we'll do it when, when, we, when my job is more secure, we'll do it next year. And using he here, right? Obviously for obvious reasons. Right? <laughs> yeah. So when this comes in, is this procrastination? Is this person delaying a decision? Procrastination is nothing but delaying your decision. Right? You are delaying a decision of wanting to do something. You are, you are wanting to do something but you are going on delaying it for various reasons. We will take a look at the reasons. But this is what we should understand by procrastination. It is not about postponing everyday things or prioritizing things. That is a different part. It is an everyday thing that you do. That is not called procrastination at all. Procrastination is only defined for long term benefits which come to us. A long term good that comes to us for which we should take action today. That action I am going on postponing, that is what we would call it as procrastination. Right? If we understand that as procrastination, then we will take a look at the myths that surround procrastination. One of the first myths, all the three myths have been listed by you people only, so I don't have to even bother about that. Right? The first myth is procrastination is all about time management. Procrastination is all about time management. That a person is not able to manage their time properly, that's why they are going on postponing things. How true is this? Is it about time management? No. no. Is it really, if you look deeply into it, is it the lack of time that's making you not do certain things? Lack of decision making. Lack of decision making. Is, but is it lack of time? No. no. Is it time management at all? No. no. It is yes. not. Right? One of the first things we need to kind of get cleared about procrastination is procrastination is not about time management. It is not about time management issues at all. You can't say that I don't have the time to do this, that's why I didn't do it. Right? All of us have the same time on our hands, the same 24 hours as we want to each one of us. But how do we want to do something? Don't we find time to do things that we want to do? 
right? It's not. It's not as if we are 24 all the 24 hours. We are so busy that we just don't have, let's say, one hour for getting into whatever we want to do. Either it's the writing, or it's the learning music, or it's exercising, or it's going to the bank and starting your savings account, or whatever is it. Whatever it is, there is nothing about time that comes in as far as procrastination is there. Right? On one hand, procrastination looks like it's about time management. It is not at all about time management. So this is one myth you need to get rid of. It is not nothing to do with time. All of us have got the same time. Right? And it is not about that I'm not prioritizing, that's why I want to juggle it and get this act into it. It's not at all about time. So first myth is time is all about time management is totally wrong. Right? Procrastination is not at all about time management. Then let's take the second, second myth says that procrastination is about laziness. How many of you agree with that? How many of you think it is only about laziness that it is preventing you from doing something? Is it laziness? Yes. Is it really laziness? Why would you say that? Why would you say it is about laziness? Okay, let's talk Because you are getting some comfort zone in your life. Yeah. To come out of it. And do something different. Yeah. That's laziness. That's how we find it. It is not only laziness, it is there. Uh, time is also involved. Time and laziness both. So that, <laughs> that, 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 that case, that case, right. So why why is it not laziness then? Why am I saying that it's not at all about laziness? It's not about laziness. Procrastination is not at all about laziness. So doing all other things except the one that. Are you busy otherwise? Yes. yes. Are you busy otherwise? Right? Are you doing a lot of other things in your day? Right? Throughout the day, are you doing things like work at home, you are going for a job, you are looking after the children, you are looking after the kitchen work, you are looking after the maid, you are looking the reading the newspaper. Are you busy otherwise? Right? You are busy otherwise, your time is engaged otherwise, you are doing work otherwise. You are not, you're not able to do only this particular thing. Right? So it is not at all about laziness. Right? When we talk, when we say it is about laziness, we will stop ourselves from getting out of it. Right? When we say it's all about laziness, what are we doing? We're just whipping ourselves. Right? We are very, very happy always to take a whip. It's always ready in our house. No, the whip is always ready. We take a whip and lash ourselves saying, oh, it's all my laziness, it's all my fault. That's why I'm not able to do it. I'm a lazy person. The moment you brand yourself as a lazy person, there's very little chance that you work to get out of it. Right? So, procrastination is not about laziness because you are hard working in other areas of your life, aren't you? Right? Aren't you hard working in other areas of your life? Only when it comes to this, you are not able to somehow muster the courage or muster the intention to do those things. So, how is it about laziness? Right? So, procrastination is not about time management, procrastination is not about laziness. Then we come to the third myth that procrastination all boils down to having Low willpower. Is this true? Is it just about willpower? What do you think? Is it about willpower? Yeah, resistance to change. Resistance to change. Lack of interest. Lack of, no, I would say really lack of interest. Because see, when we talk of procrastination, we want to do it. <coughs> right? If there's something you don't want to do, there's no question of having procrastinated at all. Right? There's something you want to do, but you're not able to do it. Intention is there, action is not there. <coughs> right? The intention is there that I want to do this, but there is no action towards doing it. That's what procrastination means. Right? I want to exercise, I want to save money, I want to get into a new relationship, I want to change my job, or I want to change my lifestyle. Right? I am just not able to do it. Is it, is it willpower? Is it just willpower? Motivation. Lack of motivation. I have, I have a little little less motivation for these things but it doesn't boil down to this person does not have the willpower that's why she or he doesn't do it no. is no. it about willpower no it is about the fear and taking responsibility fear and taking responsibility we will come to that about what exactly prevents but myth about laziness is not true the myth about willpower also not it's not about your willpower because you have got the willpower to do whatever you want right the things that you want to do do you have the willpower for that only for certain things we don't have Right? So it's not about that this person lacks willpower. This particular thing somewhere, something is blocking this person from getting out and doing it. Right? So the three means that we talk about is it is not about time management. Right? Procrastination has got nothing to do with time management. Procrastination has got nothing to do with laziness. It's not about laziness. It's not about your personality. 
Laziness is not, and procrastination is not a disease. Procrastination is not a mental condition. Procrastination is not a disease or something we say that this has to be cured. No, it is not. It's not about laziness. It's not about lack of willpower. The moment you say all these three things, look at the three things that we normally give excuses for. Lack of time, laziness, willpower. All the three things are negative. When you approach procrastination with a negative attitude, you're not going to conquer it at all. How many of us have tried for doing something so many times but still not gone down to it? Because we are looking at it from this particular lens of that this is about time management, this is about laziness. If I am not lazy, if I am hard working, I can do it. Or if I kind of muster my willpower, somehow I just push myself, I can do it. We can do it once, but sometimes we fall back again. Why? So these three things are totally misconceptions about procrastination. Nothing to do with time, nothing to do with laziness, nothing to do with willpower. Then why do we postpone things? Why do we postpone things? What is procrastination all about? We work under pressure, so we keep it in there because it pressurizes us. One is, we, do we want to do it? Do we want to have this thing? I have to save money, I have to learn music, I want to start writing. Right? All these things are targets which we would love to do. Right? I want to exercise and become slimmer or I want to become more healthier. Right? All these are targets which we want to do. The intention is there and when we look at it, we feel it will be good if I can do all these things. But we don't do it. Why? Because fear, guilt, and taking responsibility. Fear, guilt, and taking responsibility. But there's something much more deeper before we even come to fear. If it is driven by a need, then it becomes a procrastination. If it is driven by need, we will not do it. For a very long time, when there is so much of need when it comes to need, to start. Then we are desperate, anyway, do it. That's what you mean. Yeah, we have seen that, isn't it? People do not exercise at all, they just have one heart attack and next day you see him walking in a couple of months and oh, what happened, I have to do it because the doctor has recommended me. Right? But there is another thing to it. When we are not doing what we want to do, are we getting something out of it? Are we getting something out of it? I want to do this but I am not doing it. Is there a payoff for not doing what we wanted to do? Uh, is there a benefit in procrastinating? No. Yes. Is there some benefit? Is there something that we are getting out of postponing things? Yes. 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 It is useful, right? When it is useful, that's different. That, that's a different thing. Right? Okay. Yes. Things like hair, let's say things like getting I want to I want to lose my weight and become slimmer. I want to save money for my old age. I want to get a new education because that will help me. Right? I have these things, intentions in mind, but I don't do it. Am I getting some benefit of yeah, not doing it? Correct. We get instant gratification. We get instant gratification. Right? There is, there is something like uh, people say, hard work has got benefits in the long run. Laziness has got benefits now. now. <laughs> right? So if I am lazy, I can get the uh, gratification right now. Hard work has got long run. I don't know when it will come. You know, next year, next decade, or when it will come, I don't know. If I save money, 10 years down the line, maybe it will be good for my retirement. But if I spend money now, I get the benefit out of it immediately. Right? Right? So, when you look at, I want you to look at your, each of the things that you procrastinate, there is a strong belief inside you which supports procrastination. Which supports procrastination, which says, don't do this. Because there is a stronger philosophy. One philosophy says, go and exercise. I'll just give you this example. One philosophy says go and exercise, reduce your weight because then if you become normal weight or whatever it is, it's good for your health, people will like you or what, all those things are coming. There is a much stronger philosophy behind you which says, don't bother. Be as you are. What is the stronger philosophy? Right? Each, each thing differs, each thing differs for each of us. Right? Let, me, let me give you an example of the person that I had worked with. Right? He, he was of this notion that yes, I should go to the gym and get myself into uh, shape and all that. But he never ever got down to doing it. He never ever got down to doing it. Every time I would say, yes, from next month I am going to start gymming, I am going to tone my muscles, I am going to become... And he was just about what? From 35 years old, 30, 25, 30, that, that range he was there. He had become a little obese. Right? And he was always saying that, yes, I have to get myself into shape because that's good for health and it's also good for being attracted to the opposite sex and all these things is going on in his mind. But he never ever got down to doing it. When I started talking to him, because 
See again, like I said, he is going on postponing eating the gene. He is going on postponing becoming healthier. What is preventing him from doing that? There is a much deeper belief or a deeper philosophy which says, don't bother to do this. Unless I can understand that deeper philosophy, I am not going to help you with this procrastination. Right? The deeper philosophy that comes up as I keep talking to him is, people should love me for who I am. People should love me for the personality that I am. My external things should not be a factor for people liking me. People should love me for my mind. The people should love me for my mind. What do you care about my body? It can be the way it is. You understand? He is just 25. He is looking for relationships. Right? But he says, people should love me for who I am. Means what? My personality should matter. Personality in the sense of the psychological profile of me should matter to people who want to like me. It's not about how good I look. It's not about how smart I look. It's not about how I should dress. People should not like me because of the way I dress. People should not like me because of the way I look. People should love me for the way I am in my mind. People should love me for the kind of personality that I am. I am a generous, I am noble, and whatever thing that he believes in. I want people to love me for this. Now, this is a, such a strong philosophy inside the mind. It says, why bother to exercise? Because when you are exercising, what you are doing? You are trying to like, make people love you for your looks, which is not important. Because that thing has been ingrained into him from the upbringing, the parental thing, or whatever he has read and everything, that people should love you for who you are, not about how you look. He used to dress in a sloppy manner. Right? He used to dress in a sloppy manner and he never bothered about the weight part of it, the obesity, nothing of the third thing mattered it because the underlying philosophy is people should love me for who I am. But, but now if you ask him, he won't be able to tell it. This comes out because we keep I kept talking to him to find out what exactly is preventing him from doing the gym. He's such a young guy, he wants to be uh, uh, he wants to be in the company of other people, he wants to be liked by other people, but he never did the gym. So unless this underlying philosophy which prevents you from Jimmy, unless this is understood, can we really help somebody to avoid procrastination? I wanted to each of you to look into the thing because the thing that's preventing you is also helping you. The thing that's preventing you from doing what you want to do is also helping you in some way. It's helping you by propagating your philosophy, it's helping you by saying that this is what is important for you, don't bother about it. There is a satisfaction that comes from procrastination and the satisfaction is very much deeper. The deeper belief of I should be loved for who I am prevents him from taking care of his health. Right? If you understood this part of how we actually have to go into a deeper thing, let me give you one more example and I want you to tell me what could be the deeper belief of this person. He, this person again, he was about 35-40 uh, in that age, in that age he just had married about 5 years back, no kids. And he was going on saying that I want to save money for my old age. Right? And he, he every time he says I want to save money for my old age, I, so I keep worrying about what will happen in my old age. I am uh, alone, I don't even have kids to look after me. I don't know if I am going to have kids to look after me. I should save money for my old age. And I am going to do it from next month. The next month became six months, the next month became next year. He never ever got to save money for himself. What could be the underlying belief system that prevents him from saving money. It is like a delusion that anyways I don't have kids. I don't have to save for anybody in the future. What I have, let me spend it enjoy currently. Get it? Yes. Right? This, this is what prevents him from saving money, right? The underlying belief is, why should I save? Right? Aadhaer kal nahi hai. Isko maro. And the constant belief in the mind is, why bother about tomorrow, leave for today? If the underlying, see one thing we need to understand that all of us have got philosophies inside our head and being Indians, they are excellent philosophers. <laughs> like every Indian is a wonderful, wonderful philosopher because right from birth we have been hearing only philosophy. Right? Tattva, Tattva, this is what we call, no? Right? right from childhood we have been hearing only philosophies. Anything that happens in our life, they support you to tell us the philosophy of, yes, this is how it is, this is how life will be or this is what has been said in the various books and stuff like that or we have got enough mythological stories which give us how we should be philosophical. So every Indian is a born philosopher. Right? There is always a philosophy in the head which says 
do this, don't do this. So that the strong belief and the strong philosophy is live for today. Why would I say? Why would I say if I have a feeling that I should only live for today? Right? So when such a strong belief is there, how does this person ever think of he is just feeling very guilty that I am not sleeping? This person is feeling very guilty that I am not going to the gym or I am not exercising and becoming sleep. Right? Guilt is always there. When we procrastinate, is guilt a concomitant emotion that comes along with it? Right? It's an emotion that goes parallel along with procrastination. Isn't it? We postpone and then we feel miserable about it. Right? We postpone and then we feel lousy about ourselves. We kind of self-flagellate ourselves every time we postpone. And after we postpone, if we see the results of our postponement as negative, we will feel even more bad about it. Right? So when this is there, then we know that when we postpone, we get, we feel guilty or feel miserable. Unless I address the basic philosophy which is actually helping me to stay where I am. Right? There is a philosophy, there is always a thought. When I say philosophy, I mean a belief. I mean a belief or a principle or a ethics or a value, whatever you want to call it. There is always this thing which says, be where you are, this is good. Or let us take something like, becoming more organized in our life. Is this another thing we keep postponing? That I want to become more organized in my life. I want to keep things in their places. That we all love to keep things in their places and also people in their places. <laughs> right? So when I want to keep things in their places, I never get down to doing it. Right? One day I have cleaned everything. Right? My desk is freaking span, everything is in its place. Now I will say, from today it will be like this. So what I have to do? All I have to do is remove everything, put it back in its place. That's all. Right? Once I have put everything in its place, the next thing, next step seems, seems so simple that if I remove something, it should go back in its place. This is all I want to do. Why am I not able to do that? Why is that, why is that for one week I am able to do that? And if you come back one month later, my desk is the same that was before. What could be the underlying philosophy here? So nature. <laughs> it's okay to be like this. It's okay to be like this. It's okay to be like this. See, you are all wonderful at giving excuses for our actions. Actions. We find fantastic excuses for our own behavior. Right? And this fantastic behavior is again our own philosophy which says, what is the big deal about organizing things? Right? What's, the, what's so great about organizing things and putting everything in its place? Should this be a house or should this be a museum? Right? If somebody tells us that why are you putting everything in its place? What is this? This is a house, it should look like it has been lived in. Right? It should not look like a museum that everything is in its place. Or I have got another wonderful paper of coming and saying, if you put everything in its place, you don't have to search for it. Right? And the counter is, I'm not lazy to search. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not lazy to search, let things be the place, I'm not lazy to search. Right? You are lazy to search, that's why you want everything in its place. So there is okay, there's an excuse for everything. There's an excuse for everything. Right? Whatever I want to do, you always keep a counter for the whole thing. So until for the bigger things in life, so smaller things in life is different. For bigger things in life, like, like health, like getting yourself into more skill oriented, I want to learn something new, or I want to save money for my myself, or I want to get into relationships, or I want to mend some relationships that have been good. Right? These things, there is no benefit in postponing. Right? These are the procrastinations which we need to work on, and we can get to working on them only when we address the thing, the basic philosophy which says be where you are right? because there is a lot of benefit in being who you are unless this boy can say no, it is not about my mind it is not about the, I need to get into health because it is good for me it is not about interesting others right? I need to save money because it is not about I am going to leave things for my children I need to save money because I might need it right? if, we, if this person can alter the way to think that it is for my benefit, not for somebody else. If, I, if the boy is constantly thinking that people should be impressed by how I am as a personality, not how I look, he is never ever going to look at gymming or getting into health as benefit for him. He is only going to look at it as benefit for somebody else to impress me. Right? And if this person believes that saving money is only for leaving it to children, he is never ever going to save money. If he thinks of saving money as, someday I might be incapacitated. I might not be in a position to earn money for myself. I might need the money and I might not be in a position, I might not be in a position to earn money. I need money for myself. If that motive comes in as it's good for me, not for something else, perhaps there's a good chance that this person can overcome the procrastination and start working on it. Right? Then let's take a look at.
the other thing that comes in, see this overcoming this belief system is a huge task. Right? And even to uncover what is actually holding you back, you might need to talk to somebody to figure out that thing because. Because we are very good at deceiving ourselves all the time. Right? Self-deception is normal. Right? We are very good at deceiving ourselves all the time. We are very good at telling excuses for us all the time. If you want to uncover the underlying strong belief which is holding you back from doing whatever you want to do, you need to talk to somebody and get to understand yourself much better through somebody else's eyes. Only then you will be able to perceive things. When we come to this thing of procrastination, there are two kinds of procrastination that comes in. One is procrastination to start something. Another is the procrastination to finish something that you already started. Is that true? Yes. Is that true? Some of us have got what we call the starting problem. Right? We want to start something, we never get down to starting it. Some of us start some things, but never get to finishing it. Right? We have done it halfway, it's still lying there. I don't have a problem of starting. If I want to do something, I immediately start. I want to write a book, I start off doing the thing. I wrote off two wonderful chapters of the book. It's lying there for the last five years. What? I got a writer's block. Writer's block will last for how long? For a decade? No. For your lifetime? Lifelong. Lifelong? Right? So, some of us have got a problem of starting and some of us have got a problem of Finishing things that we start. Procrastination comes for both the things. Some of us have no problem. Suppose we want to start something, we do it immediately. Some of us have got a problem of maintaining it. You know, starting again is not a problem. Tomorrow I think, okay, so tomorrow I'm going to start the gym, I can start the gym. But one month down the line, I'm back at home, right? Not doing it. Right? So what what actually prevents us from doing things? Like one of you said, fear. Right? Fear is very true. Fear is there for all of us. And when we look at procrastination and fear, there are a couple of fears that always come into us. One is fear of failure. Fear of failure is what prevents us from starting things. If I start something and I don't complete it, I won't like it. I might not succeed at what I am doing. I might not succeed at what I am doing. I want to go and try for a new job. What if I go to the interview and don't get selected? What if I take up this course and I don't finish that course? Fear of failure is a very strong fear in all of us. Right? If you want to look at procrastination, you have to look at what is the fears that's preventing you. One is like the belief system that we talked about. What is about the fears? Right? If there's a fear of failure, how do I even do this? Because for me, if I do something, I should be successful at it. Now, this is another belief system that comes. Whatever I do, I must succeed at it. I can't fail. The moment you have this notion that I can't fail at something, you will never try something. Everything comes from the idea of that I want to grow, not about success. I want to grow and to grow, I need to fail. Am I willing to try and fail instead of not trying at all? Look at it. What happens if you don't try at all? Suppose let's say you want to get yourself into a master's degree. That you have, you have made it your mind that I want to get into your master's degree and I am going to get it. Suppose you don't do, because will I complete the degree at all? The mind is there, am I good enough to complete the degree at all? What if it is very difficult and I am not able to do it? What if I fail and people say, oh you started one more thing, you didn't complete one more thing. There are enough people around us. But all of us have got enough people around us who are willing to stand and mock, stand and pull us down. We are afraid of hearing those comments from them. I don't want somebody to tell me one more thing you have started. One more course you have joined. Will you complete this? Last time you did something, you didn't complete it. I don't want to hear that's why. Let me not start at all. The best thing is stay in a place where nobody can point a finger at me and say, you didn't succeed. I don't want to hear that. If you don't want to hear that, how are you going to grow? How are you going to do? If you have got the mindset that I want to do only things that I'm good at, how are you going to grow? Growth comes from trying things you don't know the results of. Growth comes from taking chances. Growth comes from taking risks. Right? Unless I'm willing to take risks of trying and failing, I'm not going to do it all. If I want to have a master's degree, suppose I don't try anything at all, where will I be after five years? Where I am? There I am, I am here, 2015 I am here, if I start a master's degree course now, another 5 years later, perhaps I would have finished it. Perhaps even if I didn't finish it, I would have learned something. If 
perhaps I would have learned that this is not for me. Even that is a, that is an important thing to learn. But suppose I don't do it at all, where will I be? Ham hai jaha, ham se jaha. Right? It was like that, isn't it? Where I will be where I continue to be. So what's the point in doing that? If I try and fail, is that good? If our children try and fail, is that good? Is it important for us to encourage people to try something and not look at the results of it? If we are so constantly focused on the results, the outcome, we have got only one metric to measure things and that is success. We don't have a metric to measure the number of things that I tried and failed. Today if you look at it, some of the very wonderful new companies which are hiring people, they ask you to list the things that you tried and failed. They are not asking you to list the things that you succeeded at. They are not asking you to think what are you good at, no, what are the things that you tried and failed at. What does it tell us about the person? He'll have an attitude to always look into things. Look into things. There's an open mindedness to learn new things, to try new things, to fail new things. So today companies are recruiting people who have tried many things and failed it. Right? This is a new metric that comes in. And if that, that measurement comes in into our life, that I'm not going to measure things from the success of what I tried, but the number of things that I tried, can you is it possible for us to work on the procrastination? Can you overcome the fear of failure because I'm not worried about failure at all now. The, the very fact that I tried is a success. You understand it? Now I'm looking at it totally differently. If I tried something, that is success. Not about the outcome of did it really come or did it really not come. Right? So fear of failure, if we can look at the fear of failure in the eyes and say, I'm not looking at it as the outcome as my, my uh, metric for uh, success. I'm just only looking at it try. If I try, I'm successful. If I define myself, if I define the children around me as if they have tried, they are successful, not if they have tried and succeeded. Succeeded is different, right? Whether it comes in your hand, how many things contribute to our success and failures is totally different. Believe me, lots of other things contribute to our success and failures. It's not about my hard work, it's not about my mental capacity, it's not about how many hours I have put in. That's not the only thing that contributes to success, it's not the only thing that contributes to failure also. Failure and success are about too many parameters that are contributing to it, nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about how much of chance played in their life, how much of luck helped them, how much of connections helped them to succeed. Nobody talks about all this. When you, when you interview great people, the only thing is hard work leads to success. Who doesn't work hard? Who doesn't work hard? This only hard work leads to success, it will be fantastic, isn't it? It's not like that. So when you look at procrastination, address the fear of failure. Define success as trying. Don't define success as outcomes. If you define success as trying, you will not stop at should I try this or not? What if I fail? The way to overcome the fear of failure is to define success as trying and not as the outcome. Right? The other fear that comes in, another major fear that comes in when we look at procrastination is fear of success. Is it possible? Is it possible to be afraid of success? Yes. yes. Why? My expectations, if I go there, I can't come from there. I, I can't come from there. What will they be thinking about me? What will they think about me? Will I be able to sustain that? Is that a benchmark or whatever? I have created a new benchmark. Will I be able to sustain that? Yes. Right? What else? If I pass. Responsibility. Right? I, I, had, I had a friend of mine who was working in the bank and he he was in bank they had two categories you know they had something like clerical category and management of the officers category he had to just write an exam and get into the officers category i used to tell him you have the brains you can crack up exam very easily why don't you do that no i'll do it next year goes on postponing it right when you dig deeper like i said the belief system when you dig deeper he is afraid that oh if i become an officer my responsibilities will be I don't want responsibilities on me. Fear of success comes because you don't want to take new responsibilities. New responsibilities. Will I live up to that? Right? As a club, all I have to do is do this tagging, finish it at 5.30 and run off at 5.30 to my home. If I become an officer or if I become a management person, I have to stay longer and I have to address other people. Right? The moment you are a manager, you are going to be having other people reporting to you. Will I be able to handle the new responsibilities? I don't want, want, want to take on the new responsibilities. 
Often people also postpone having children. They are happy with your current life, so that's why they don't want to get into something responsible. Get into something, right? I don't want to because I am very happy at this level, right? Nobody can, again, nobody can point a finger at me. I am very good at what I am doing. The moment I take on any responsibility, will I be able to fulfill the responsibilities? Will I be able to live up to the expectations of myself and others around me? What if I am not able to live up to the expectations of others? So fear of success. Look into, your, look into your own procrastination. Are you postponing because if I do this and succeed, I may not be able to take the success. Or if I do this and succeed, my relationships could alter. Is it possible? Is it possible that my relationships with others could alter if I become successful and I don't want to jeopardize my current relationships? I know if I can go to an interview and crack it, I can get a job. And I can start earning on my own. But if I start earning on my own, what will happen to the family dynamics? What will happen to the relationship with my spouse who says don't work? I am earning, you don't have to earn. But I know I, I want to do this. But if I do this, I might succeed. I might go to the interview, I might get the job. If I get the job, and I take the job and I start earning, I could be jeopardizing my relationships. Right? Fear of relationships being suffering. That's also another reason why we could postpone things. Right, so procrastination comes from a fear of failure, fear of success, fear of fear of responsibilities, and fear of not being able to meet the expectations of myself and others around me. Right, that's that's another thing. And there's also this fear of what we call the fear to the self-esteem. You know, I don't want my self-esteem to get affected in any way. No, if I do this, and if I don't succeed. I will feel miserable about myself. I will be in the worst of situation than where I am. I don't want that. So when you look at procrastination, procrastination is one part about a strong belief which keeps you in its place. It's happy to keep you in its place because it's a stronger belief which says be where you are, it's comfortable comfortable thing. The other part is about the fears that come into us. Right? Fears are what prevents us from doing something. If I finish this task, I don't want to finish this task. If I finish this task, what will I do later? Sometimes not finishing the task has got a meaning in my life. I will not be assigned a new task. I will not be assigned a new task. Like this task is there, I go on looking at it and say, I have got this to do, I have got this to do, I have got a purpose in my life. I am taking that unfinished thing as a meaning to my life. Children, I can finish this lesson, she will ask me to study. She will ask me to study one more. <laughs> if I finish this, I have given you five problems to my son, I said, do this. He says, I take my own time to do it, I am not yet got the answer, I am not yet got the answer. Why? If I finish this five, I am going to give him another five. <laughs> right? I don't want to finish that task. Right? Because additional tasks will come into me. Right? This is on a lighter note, but look at the deeper things that go into your life. Right? Are there things you don't want to finish which you have started because they are afraid of the outcome of finishing the task? Does it lose the meaning for whatever you have? Or does it spoil the relationship what you have? Hundreds of things contribute to us. When we look at human mind, I want to understand it's very complex. It's too complex for us to kind of put it down into these are the things, if you do these things, we will succeed. If it was so easy to have nice seven steps to success, seven steps to overcome procrastination, five steps to do this. We read hundreds of books like that or hundreds of articles like that, isn't it? In five steps, you can do everything. All you need in five steps, if you do, I can go on the road from here to the five steps. It's the only thing that I can do. Right? So there's nothing like an easy way to do it. So, but if we want to address procrastination, we have to address the stronger belief which holds us there in our place. That is one part of it. And to address the fear of failure. Out of the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of being shamed, right? Fear of being shamed in front of others by not succeeding. Right? If I can address these things and say, I don't want to look at what others think about me. I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this for myself. I'm going to go and learn music. I'm going to go and learn swimming for because I want to do it. I don't care what others think about me. Right? How can you go and do it at this age? There are people who prevent you from doing it because of your age. Right, what's the age got to do with it if I want to learn something new? Right, as long as I am capable of doing something, why should I do that? Because others are preventing me from doing it. Right, so look at that part of it. Who, who is preventing you from doing it? And often we, we procrastinate sometimes because the what we need to do has been defined by others, not by us. If we define things that we want, we may not procrastinate it. Who has given you this belief that you should save money? Who has given you the belief that you should have your good health? Has it come from somebody else? Or do you believe in that yourself? 
If you don't believe in it, you are most likely to postpone it. If you believe in it, there is a chance that we can work on that. If the belief has been given to you because somebody else in your family believes in it, or your role model or whomever you take as a role model in your life believes in it or has given this philosophy, right? you take it as oh, this is what I am supposed to do. But you don't believe in it. If you don't believe in it, you are not going to try doing it. Right? So when it comes to procrastination, first thing I want you to understand is we want to work on procrastination somewhere we have to accept it from, go, go towards it from an acceptance level. Go towards it from the non-judgmental level about ourselves. Right? We need to start by being kind to ourselves. Start being kind to yourself. If you are postponing it, yes, I am postponing it. Right? And I will work on this. I am not going to hate myself for who I am. Yeah, Raj. Not procrastinate. Absolutely. But uh, uh, like somebody said, uh, the chalai attitude might actually, you know, at a later age become very difficult for you. Very difficult for you to overcome, yeah. isn't it? So, partly, like I said, lots of things have come from conditioning, from parenting, from the books we have read, from the people who have influenced us, you know, known people, unknown people who have influenced us, we have heard them, we have read about their books, or we have heard their talks on the YouTube, we have been very influenced by them. But do I believe in it? Right? So if you want to work on procrastination, the first step is to have this level of acceptance and not hate for yourself or dislike for yourself for who you are. Right? Have a little bit of kindness to yourself. It's okay. Sometimes I procrastinate, I will work on this. But if I am going on kind of berating myself and saying I am lazy, I am not able to manage my time, I don't have the willpower. These are the three things that really stops us from getting out of the procrastination way. Procrastination loop, you know, that loop is always there. I am no good. The moment you start with, I am not good enough, you are not going to be able to overcome procrastination. Start with a non judgmental stance that look at what you are going to do. Yes, I need to work on this part. I am not hating myself, I am not disliking myself for who I am. Only then you can start looking at the procrastination part of it. Then, yeah, Meena. Uh, see, uh, this is to do with, uh, see, we, this is the same for relationships also. We procrastinate getting into a relationship. And also progress from getting out. From, uh, what should be the deeper belief in doing that? I would say again, it, it would be very facile on my part to just give a bad answer for that. Mm -hmm. right? When you look at why does somebody hesitate to get into a relationship? Hundreds of different reasons. Right? I don't want to make a commitment. Right? I don't know if this is good enough for me. Right? I don't know if I can get a better relationship. Right? There's always this thing going on. Yes, I have got the relationship with me. Should I commit to this relationship? What if I lose the chance of having a better relationship? Right? If I am looking at a relationship as a commodity, right? I start looking at a relationship as a commodity that oh, there may be a better TV next year, there may be a better vehicle model next year. If I am looking at a relationship as I am going to get a better model of a human being next year, I might not be able to commit to a relationship. The same way to get out of the relationship, again I am going on, I know I have to get out of this for my own good. But I am going on postponing for 100 different reasons. The reason is, marriages are made for life. I have promised that I will be with this person for the rest of my life, so I should be with this person for the rest of my life, because somebody has told me promises are not to be broken. This is a strong belief I have. Promises can never be broken. Can promises be broken? Yes, it can be broken. It can always be broken. It can always be broken. It can always be they don't even make a promise. Yes, or perhaps they should say they don't make a promise at all. But when you look at when you look at a strong belief that promises should never be broken, when we have this thing of should, must, ought, you know, these are very strong words. And when you say I should never be, promises should never be broken, then you are setting up yourself for disaster, right? I will never get out of the relationship because I promised my parent that I will be in this relationship. I promised my spouse that I will be in this relationship. For the rest of my life. This is a promise I have made. I can never break my promise. All rules, all rules are made for a context. All rules are context driven. They apply in this context. Meaning comes from context. Promises in this situation, I have made a promise. If the situation changes, I can break a promise. Right? That, that's a kind of a generalized answer for what you asked. Right? Otherwise, it's, it's always about, when we look at procrastination, there is always a pattern for procrastination. 
Right? It always starts with, I want to do this. Just when I'm wanting to do this, I have a lot of other things that I can that come up to my mind. Does that happen? Yes. We call this as procrastination activities. The procrastination activities are displacement activities. Activities which you do instead of doing what you are supposed to do. I am supposed to go for the gym or I am supposed to sit and read for one hour. The moment your child says, yes, I am going to read from 7 to 8, at 7 o'clock, you will become hungry. <laughs> at 7 o'clock, you want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> right? And the bathroom will take its own sweet time to come out. You can't sit in that. Right? So there is always what we call displacement activities that come in. There is always displacement activity or procrastination activities that come in when you want to postpone things. And then, we look at, it's going to make me uncomfortable. There's something that I need to do, but that's going to make me uncomfortable, so let me not do it. If we want to work on procrastination, there are a couple of things we need to keep in mind, that I'll be comfortable with discomfort in the short run, because there's going to be a benefit in the long run. I'm going to give up some money right now to spend, because this money I'm going to put for savings. Right? This is going to be a discomfort time moment. Right? I'm going to go and exercise. It's going to be discomfort for the short term, but my health will improve in the long run. It's going to be discomfortable for me to take up a new education, but I'm going to do it because it's going to benefit me to have this education in the long run. Am I willing to put up with short term discomfort for long term gain? Short term pain for long term gain. Am, am I willing to do that? Am I willing to put up some amount of discomfort and do things because they need to be done? Procrastination can be overcome only by one way and that is by action. <laughs>
There's something very comfortable about not changing in a particular situation. Look at it. Unless you understand that belief, you cannot work on procrastination. Right? When it comes to the practical part of how do we actually do it, perhaps there are a few things we could try out. One is, one technique is that we do the worst thing or the worst thing, suppose in a, in a day you have to do something that you really dislike. Right? Do it first. Do it first. Right? We say the worst thing first. Right? Or another term that is used is eat the elephant beetle, they call it. You know, the worst thing that you need to do it, do it in the first day in the morning, you get out of it. Right? Suppose, it, let's say it's about writing. Let's say you want to become a writer and you say, at least 30 minutes in a day I want to spend on writing. The idea is, you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you first to sit and write. Don't switch on the, the system to look at Facebook. And that becomes a habit. <laughs> right? That becomes a habit. Right? You do the most important thing or the thing that is very difficult for you to do. Right? I won't say important thing. The thing that is very difficult for you to do but you want to do it. Right? Do it in the first thing in the morning, you get rid of it. What happens? There's always a feedback loop, what we call it. You know, you get to think, I finished it. You know, first half an hour, 6.30, I'm done. I'm done with the first thing. That's not that I am free, my mind is free about not having to do it for the next day. The fear also goes off. Or suppose you just carry it in your day. Oh, today I have to do half an hour, today I have to do half an hour. You are not focusing on what you need to do because you are constantly focusing on doing a half an hour of exercise, work or whatever new thing that you need to do that's difficult. So get doing the difficult thing, the first thing in the day. What we call the worst thing first. Right? Worst thing first. What is the worst thing that you need to do? The most difficult thing you need to do. Finish it off in the morning. Some people have this notion that, oh, today I have to call somebody. Right? It's become a huge burden because I have to call my mom and speak to her. I call my sister and speak to her. The whole day your mind is bugging over, I have to call, I have to call. And you are dreading, I hope she doesn't call. Right? Because I want to be the person to call. I don't want her to call, but I am going on postponing that call. Right? I have suggested to people, why don't you do the call? Right? I always dread this person call. Every 15 days, my mom will call and talk to me and it will be a 2 hours of philosophy. Right? 2 hours of philosophy that I am going to say from her. I don't like it. So I say, why don't you do the call? Can I do the call? Of course you can do the call. I say, you do the call, you can control the time. If she calls, she is going to speak for 2 hours. You call, you can speak for 10 minutes and say, now I want to go and rush for work. I just wanted to say, hello and how are you and finish it off. Do the worst thing first. Do the thing that you dread first thing in the morning. Do not postpone the dread. The moment you postpone it, fear builds up. Fear constantly builds up in our mind because we are constantly postponing things that we need to do. So do the worst thing first is one of the techniques that we can adopt. Right? Another technique we can adopt is, can I break down that goal into smaller things? I want to write a novel is a very huge task. I want to write a novel is a very huge task. I want to write for half an hour is manageable. Right? Today I want to write for half an hour. Right? If I have the whole thing in my mind, I have to write the whole thing, or I have to cut my weight by 20 kidneys, it's too, too high a goal to aim for. I want to exercise today for half an hour is easier goal. You don't have to see the whole staircase. You have to see only one stair at a time. Right? If I want to see the whole staircase, oh my god, I have to climb so much. No, I have to climb only one staircase today. I have to climb only one stair. Look at that part. Can you break it down into? Smaller units. That's another way to look at procrastination. I want to do only five minutes of exercise. I will do only five push-ups. I will only do five sit-ups. I will run or jog for five minutes. Only five minutes. Is that possible? Yeah. I would say you don't do it for one minute. Do it for one minute. That's success. Right? Not from not doing it to doing it for one minute is hundred percent improvement. Do it for one minute. Whatever you want to do, do one minute of writing. Do one minute of exercise. Do one push-ups in a day. When you are in a place to write for one minute and you feel that one minute is success, you start writing, you can go for five minutes, you can go for half an hour. Because for you, one minute is success, is done. Right? Always the feedback is that I am getting successful at what I am doing helps us. So do whatever you want to do. Start with just one minute of that activity. Right? Save for, let's say you want to save a huge amount, save a thousand rupees in a month. Right? You start with the basic unit. You, you, it's much easier to go towards the longer goal. Right? That's something I wanted to keep in mind. Another very important uh, uh, technique that we can adopt is collaborate with others to help you in overcoming procrastination. Involve other family members. Right? Tell other family members, this is what I want to do. I want you to help me to overcome this procrastination. Right? You're going on postponing Let's say joining a course of doing swimming, make your child your collaborator. Children will be very happy to point out your mistakes. 
Children will be delighted to show you that oh, you said you will do it today, you are not done. Right? Because you are the one who is always telling them about it. Right? Give them the opportunity to say, I am going for swimming from tomorrow. If I don't do it, you remind me. Believe me, at 6.30 promptly tell me you don't need an alarm from your kid. Right? He will be looking at what from 6 o'clock. He should go to work. He is hoping that he will not do it. <laughs> so he is hoping that he will not do it. So he can come and tell you, look, you are not going today. Right? You failed in what you wanted to do. Right? So involve your children in collaborative. Involve your loud ones in collaborative too. When I say involve others, please involve the loud ones. <laughs> Don't involve people who anyway don't like you. Right? <laughs> so make a public commitment for your procrastination. It helps you a lot. Right? Make a public commitment. This is what I am going to do. Right? It will help you to work on procrastination. This is the short thing. I just wanted to talk about procrastination. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we wind up. The next uh, the third Thursday talk will be on meaningful and exciting careers by Dr. Ali. That will be on the 17th December. He will be talking on meaningful and exciting careers. And then in January, we will be having a talk of role of chance in our lives. Role of randomness or chance in our life. That is by Ishwa. And in Argonaut, we are going to have two talks. The next talk is on 4th of December. That is discipline and punishment for kids. That is by Ali. And building good mental health will be in January. Again by Ali. Ali will be taking all the sessions in Argonaut. In this article, we are going on changing over. Every time it will be a different kind of a faculty. Right? So that is about procrastination. I just wanted to end uh, procrastination with uh, what you call a Doha, no? Kabir had said that. When you look at procrastination, there's always two ways of looking at it. Now, why procrastinate? Why not procrastinate? Right? This Doha was there from Kabir. Uh, what was it? Kal kare so aaj kar. Aaj kare so so this was what he said. Which meant whatever you want to do tomorrow, do it today. And whatever you want to do today, do it now. You never know when you are going to get an opportunity to do it, do it at all. Right? But then human mind is wonderful, you know. There's always a counter to the whole thing. There's always a mind to think why not? Like I said, no, do it later. Right? So there's another thing he said. Uh, Today is a day of the day. Today is a day of the day. Today is a day of the day.